starting out, I intend to make a bit of a video to show this, if it works out as I expect. This is a, uh, a 16 by one HDMI switch that I uh, uh, found a couple different variations, but I think uh, some of the um, model numbers are all the same and stuff. Some kind of like no name Chinese brand uh, that I found on Amazon, found a product page from a manufacturer and uh, a couple listings on eBay. I'll try to incorporate all that into the video, but uh, uh, just gonna start with some unboxing just to, to show this off. Um, a lot of times these things, they may be different people who package them up and sell them, but it's all the same on the inside, maybe a different logo and stuff. But uh, um, so I'm obviously just showing the one I'm getting. So, uh, and this actually uh, came from China. Um, found a, um, a seller on uh, eBay um, that uses the name Test Smart. I don't know if it actually is Test Smart or it's just someone who uh, uses that. And uh, um, came from China, sold in Australian do uh, dollars. <laughs> of course, after it was shipped, I found it even cheaper on a, a different place on Amazon. It just got discounted or something. But uh, um, uh, it came very, very fast, like within a week. Um, so actually, I was surprised because I said it would take like a month to get here or something. So packaged okay. Um, I should have shown this actually was one of the more fancier packaging I ever saw. This was actually packed it up really nicely. And uh, um, so here's the switch. We'll come back to that. Um, user manual. Let's see if it's all in Chinese or not. Um, no, actually, looks like a, like a legit uh, user manual. So that's good. Um, I just put something together for my wife that was literally all in Chinese. I had to follow the diagrams. Uh, here's the uh, IR um, input uh, thing, remote. Um, says it doesn't come with a battery. So um, let me check. So I'm actually going to need that, I'm sure, to start setting it up. Um, the CR230, sorry. CR2025 batteries, which uh, I believe I have some. So yeah, no battery. And I asked them to send a US plug. Let's see if they did, otherwise, uh... yeah, cool, great. The pictures that I've seen, I think every picture I've seen, it has one of those other, I don't know what countries use what. I just know that it's not a US one. Um, it's got like some weird thing, well, if you're in <laughs> those countries, you probably think that that's the standard, but to me it's not. So thankfully they sent me a US plug, so that's good. Um, just the lighting isn't very good. Yeah, uh, so it's, um, I don't know if that shows up on there, but you can look up if you need to know what it, the adapter it uses to use a, a third party one. Uh, this should be for rack mounting it, which I will be doing if it fits. So, uh, not exactly sure what that's going to be for. Um, here's uh, for the rack, uh, wings for the rack mounting. So, let's put this over to the side. And just try to shoot this off. Um, so, I want to show this model number. So you can search that. There we go. Uh, so that uh, HSW1601A1U, and uh, that's the website that uh, did find this on. Although then I was going back and looking, and the website wasn't working. Um, but tesmart.com with a dash in there. So as you can see. Um, so 16, uh, HDMI inputs and then, uh, one HDMI out. So 16 by one. And this is supposed to support 4K, 4, 4K 60, 444. So I think that's 18 gigabyte per second. If I'm wrong, uh, sorry. Um, and here's the front, but let's keep, keep looking at the back. Um, 
I'm still not exactly sure what this is for. I don't think it's anything I'm going to be using, but um, some sort of input. I don't know if that's like a serial input or something uh, they plug in there. And then uh, your power, then your IR in, which uh, it's got the IR uh, sensor. Don't know if you can just uh, straight plug from IR in to IR out um, connection, but it uses, uh, I think that's a 1.8. Um, uh, connection as opposed to those smaller ones that uh, um, tend to see. I don't know exactly what the size is. I just know sometimes for IR stuff, like it'll be like the standard thing you usually plug in, like a, a headphone jack, a uh, smaller headphone jack, eighth inch. And then there's these smaller ones that uh, I kind of have a box of both of them. But either way, um, here's your front. So it's got this LAN connection that's uh, supposed to be able to communicate it through uh, LAN. Um, don't know if I'll be using that for what I'm doing, but uh, um, uh, if it works out like some of the things I've used, that can be super, super helpful. Um, just another way to communicate you know, as opposed to IR, which is sometimes you know, kind of buggy. You gotta have, have things uh, set up specifically. And then, uh, not quite sure why there's only nine buttons up here. Um, I guess I was expecting like a button for each input. Um, I'll have to show like this site or something that has like all the, the stuff, but there's like EDID, uh, EDID, 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 uh, however you pronounce that, uh, programming and stuff. Uh, should be able to have like auto sensing and uh, to turn on and off and um, seem pretty damn full function. Um, so that's that. I'll see power supply, power on and off. Though um, it's not super important to go over details, but just trying to show what I'm using this for. So here's my retro gaming rack, um, as opposed to where the receiver and current gaming consoles are and stuff. But uh, um, you know, uh, accumulating more and more that uh, we use HDMI inputs and running out of space uh, from, this is the uh, Mono Price um, Blackbird HRM 2218F or BF. Um, so that's a eight by one. Uh, HDMI switch to this, so be able to double the number of inputs. Uh, so you have a OSSC that goes in there, so anything that's uh, RGB SCART or component back there plugs into that, and then that goes HDMI into this, and then uh, anything else that uses HDMI, so like your 360, uh, just got mini consoles for right now until I get plugged in originals and then you know PS3s and Wii's and all that kind of shit. So, um uh, so she had plenty of space actually for what I do. So uh, see how this is rack mounted in here. Um, this is shorter. Um, we'll see. So hopefully if it's the right width, I'll be able to just plug that new one in, put the wings on and just bolt it in. I'm probably going to reorganize this too. And then just showing so this, I use the IR. What I use, Monoprice also has a um, IR um, repeater. So I just sit this over here. This communicates just perfectly well. I have the, the source over here. Um, that use a Logitech Harmony Hub. This communicates to that. And then I ha have that, um, well, that's the receiver. Then I have two, or sorry, transmitter, sorry. Then I have two receivers. Uh, one that just kind of goes back. No, actually, don't have two in mind. I want to get a second one. Just have one just kind of re-send the signal back to here. But yeah, you see what I'm saying. So that's how it talks. But it would be nice to, if I could just run an IR cable all the way over and then plug straight into that. We may do that later. So uh, here's the uh, product page for this. Um, and just as an aside, I saw they even make 16 by 6 matrices. So um, those matrices are usually a lot more expensive, um, but uh, if you needed to do something else, it looks like they make a couple different things related to this. So here's that model number, um, and uh, so some, just some of the features. I mean, you can look this up on your own, but uh, um, it's got EDID uh, emulators, and uh, like I said, it's supposed to be a uh, um, 4K60, 444, so really anything up until, actually even kind of including, you know, Xbox One, Series X, and PS5, if that's all you're wanting um, uh, to display would work, but uh, um, basically everything up to 
uh, Xbox One. Fuck it. Their names screw me up. So, right? Oh, we just are leaving as Xbox One, right? And then the PS4. I mean, you can run everything up here and maximize all your video inputs. And then, obviously, all your retro consoles. Also wanted to show. So, this is uh, what the one I actually got. So, this is from, it says, TE Smart Service. And there's another seller that, as far as I can tell, it looks like it's, it's like everything's the same, but they just could be just spoofing the same names. But there's, I think it's TE Smart Service 1. But this, the one I purchased from was TE Smart Service. Um, so in Australian dollars, $204.65 uh, with uh, free shipping. And actually, I ordered this on October 5th, so it's 12 days. I got it in 12 days. Um, uh, I think that's actually pretty pretty good, considering um, coming all the way from China. Um, Sometimes that stuff takes forever. Uh, so here's a wet, um, uh, an Amazon listing that appears to be the same thing. And um, it's just TE Smart Store. Um, I make no guarantees any of these people are doing anything other than just copying the name <laughs> of what they're selling. But uh, here it's 10% off of 219. So um, uh, what's that, $22 off? So this comes out to be under $200. Um, I would show you the product page for the monoprice one that I use, but it, um, last I checked, it's like it's not listed anymore. But uh, what I also wanted to mention was that that, that um, monoprice uh, switch is only 1080 up to 1080p. Um, so um, and it was it's like a hundred bucks. So um, uh, so for and I couldn't find any other 16 switches uh, for anything close to this price with all these features. Um, in fact, I, I think I only found like one other that was 16. Uh, the max I could find is eight. So uh, 100 bucks for 1080p uh, eight switch, if you can find that monoprice one, which I do see they still had on Amazon at least, or 200 bucks for 16 switches up to 4K. So I uh, just want to throw that out there. And then uh, this is the uh, 2025, uh, um, CR2025 battery. Thankfully I had one in my box. So cool, all right. So showing this how the, uh, Rack ears, wings, whatever you want to call them, go in, just use these little screws, and uh, you put in the four, so that you have the two big openings here. That's pretty standard, other things I've done, that's a pretty standard way that they do this. If the device is uh, shorter, the wings will be longer, the same idea. And uh, um, so you, like you can see on the Monoprice one, the wing is just longer. And measure this out. This is a middle Atlantic rack. I think this is a pretty standard um, uh, dimensions. The width on all of my views, I've used the monoprice ones. I've used the different sizes of these ones. They're all the same width. The things you, you get different would be the height um, and the depth. Sometimes you can find like shorter or longer uh, depths. So that will, it'll slide in there and just put in your screws to bolt that in, okay? So the other thing, if you're gonna be doing all, something like this at all, but um, just get good HDMI cables. So um, you can get the uh, um, the 48 uh, gigabit um, per second uh, cables um, that Monoprice list, and it'll say 48 gig. Uh, but uh, yeah, I like like I use these for everything that's shorter, but the longer ones are still expensive. Maybe as the years go by, they'll get more and more. Uh, appropriate but uh at a minimum like you should never buy any cables lesser quality than this at least get the premium high speed uh that uh, doesn't see on here these are going to be 18 gigabit rated um so that'll get you your 4k uh, 6444 okay um so uh and, and these i mean the um i have four the 25 uh foot ones that uh I have uh, in the setup right now. I don't know exactly how much they cost, but they're a reasonable price. I mean, if you're spending 200 bucks for you know, this thing to plug in 16 HDMI connect connected devices, <laughs> I think you can afford to get those kind of cables. And then just kind of keep in mind, if you're watching this a year or two from now, maybe you just go ahead and just invest in these uh, ones, the 48 gig ones, because that will future proof for quite a while. All right. Another friendly reminder, especially in the winter months when it gets dry, you'll build up static electricity touch your metal rack to decharge before you're touching everything. I just shocked myself. All right, so we got this set up. I wanna show a little more of the rack and stuff, so I'm gonna actually, I think, make this a little bit more of a video of just kind of how to connect all this stuff together, how this setup is done, more than just that switch to, in case anybody is interested. So, um, just looking at the front, 
I think we're going to label this how to connect 17 game systems to one HDMI cable. <laughs> so there's that switch. And uh, one thing I've noticed right off, I might be getting this wrong, but I don't think I can turn this on and off with the remote. It's just with the switch, which could be a little annoying because that light's pretty bright, but um, I still need to figure that out. And uh, when I plugged it into network, it did get detected and assigned an IP address. Um, but when I'm using uh, the Harmony remote um, and you scan network for devices, it doesn't show up. Um, and then uh, I did notice that with that IR uh, input, um, my uh, device that I use from Mona Price does have an IR out. So I might uh, just try, I'll just plug this in with the rack here and just run a cable down and connect that way. But uh, if I don't turn it on and off with the switch, then there really isn't anything to do because so far it seems like the automatic switching is working. So um, anyhow, just a thing. So um, kind of working a little bit backwards. So anything that's HDMI, so like the uh, Mini SG, it connects via HDMI. So this is just connected straight to that switch. And then uh, <clears throat> I have uh, a Dreamcast that uh, right now I have it connected through uh, uh, VGA. Um, so that's connected to an OSS-C. So that's connected to that, just that, because the only thing I have is VGA, just connected straight to that port to OSS-C. Then OSS-C has uh, HDMI out to the switch. And then anything that connects uh, via RGB SCART goes to a G-SCART. So there's a couple things back there. Um, and then uh, this G-SCART output just goes straight to the OSSC. And then anything that connects via component goes to a G, G comp, or is it called GS comp? I can't remember. Um, which that then, that output um, then goes straight to the OSSC. So audio for um, uh, RGB over SCART is in that cable. And then audio from uh, that DVI cable, it has its own separate uh, right and left um, inputs, which you then have to uh, use a connector to go to Ethos jack to connect into the um, OSSC. And then the same thing for uh, any of the component cables, they have their own uh, right and left uh, audio, um, which then comes in through a similar eighth inch um, stereo uh, port. All right, so we got uh, uh, PS1, PS2, uh, Sega Dreamcast, a uh, um, Mega SG, which is a Sega Genesis, um, and then uh, original Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One X, and then PlayStation 4, because these now are kind of technically uh, retro consoles now that new consoles come out in a week or two. So I moved them over here. And then uh, PS3, which um, probably gonna replace this with a PS3 Slim to save some space. And this thing is fucking hot as hell. So I have an extra fan and stuff that runs on it. And stood up here at the top to, uh, which another point about this setup, um, I leave the, the door open when I'm using it and then I leave the back off the back. Uh, I'll put the sides back on. And then uh, at any one time, there's really, there's only one console running. So um, I don't think it gets too hot except for this thing. Uh, and then, uh, uh, mini PC engine, mini Super Nintendo, mini uh, uh, NES. So these are just placeholders, really, because uh, I have them all connected with uh, power and HDMI. So I just have them there, and I can use them uh, for, hopefully, I'll get uh, the analog versions of those when they go back in stock for these, and then when this goes on sale. And then a GameCube uh, through component, uh, Wii through component, Wii U through HDMI, then obviously a uh, uh, Wii uh, a Switch. So let's move on to the back, or just looking through the side. So if you use these racks, this is a, a Middle Atlantic uh, rack. Um, they, I think all these racks, I've got some of these, I've got uh, um, uh, the Monoprice ones, the widths are all gonna be the same, but you can buy them in different heights. And then there are 
at least two standard depths. I don't remember which one this is, uh, but you get these uh, racks that you um, screw in and uh, or shelves rather. So um, uh, try to use uh, ones that have as much venting and stuff naturally in it as possible. And here you're going to see where try to use this as much as possible for your cable management. So obviously this just looks like a big mess, but you don't really see it from the front, right? But everything comes down. And then as you go down, a little bit of a mess up here, but you can see that all power goes down one side and then all data basically goes down the other side, all right? And uh, I use these, uh, these Velcro straps. I get these off Monoprice. Basically, everything. I get so much stuff from them. Um, they should give me a sponsorship or something. But uh, uh, these things are awesome. Um, they uh, um, there's two two links. There's a, a shorter one and a longer one, and they're just Velcro straps. And so you can take them on and off and reuse them. And they kind of look nice if you you're uniform with them as opposed to the zip ties. I hate those zip ties because I mean they're really nice except for when you want to take them off and redo stuff. So um, so I use these pretty liberally. So some of this is just, the length wasn't quite long enough to go all the way up the this little channel, but you can kind of you get, get all OCD about this because the more you do that, the less cabling you have in the way to give you more ventilation. But, you know, you kind of try to keep things together. Use this, as, um, these bars here. There's like a channel in there. Just kind of run uh, everything all up and down. So everything, everything just comes down. Uh, to networking to a switch and then uh, um, all that audio video cables just go in plug in all those devices I just mentioned the bottom down there I mean you just got to work with it I mean there's so many cabling that you try to keep things as nice and organized as possible and I can't really show it on the camera very well but yeah um, the biggest pain in the ass is power because at least with the uh, audio video networking uh, like I pretty much make all my own uh, cat six cables so I can make them the length that I want make them you know, go straight from point A to point B um, and then in terms of uh, HDMI cables um, you can buy you know three feet six feet maybe five feet um, ten feet um, and you can try to make them fit as much as possible um, I have to use ten feet to get up here of which that leaves me a couple feet which I kind of coil coil up down at the bottom but you can keep all that as nice and uniform and organized as possible. But power cords, you're left with however long the power cord is for that device. Um, if something uses uh, you know, micro SB or micro USB, uh, I mean, I buy these um, Amazon Basics uh, cables because they're nice and cheap, and get them in bundles like three or five, and then you get them three feet, six feet. I think these are six feet, so that's all I use: three feet, six feet. Um, so there you have some ways to kind of control the length, um, but uh, everything else, um, you, I try to kind of place things in in an order that just kind of makes sense to me, but also sometimes I've made a choice because the cabling just makes a little bit more sense. Um, if you got a really long cable, then I stick it up a little higher versus shorter cables a little bit um, lower. And then freaking power bricks are the bane of my existence. Um, <laughs> so I've got to figure out a way to place to put those. And sometimes you use little uh, wraps to organize some of that cabling. Um, this is something where four people could do this and come up with four different solutions uh, to things. But uh, um, then you got to figure out where to plug them all in. Um, so um, this is, I'd done this when I actually used to use this as my AV rack. Um, here I use zip ties because they're nice and sturdy and just uh, connected a, a power strip uh, to there. Um, and uh, here are some of these, uh, um, the, the the notches are vertical and some of them are horizontal. So try to use that to organize things. Um, I've got a fan at the top, which is super uh, loud. So I actually don't really use it, but I, you know, it's the, the cable is hard wired to that fan um, up here. Um, I think there's a upgrade you can get this quieter, but I don't know probably won't use it uh, But anyways, everything's plugged in and then at, down there. I have another uh, power strip It's an APC power strip uh, It's got 12 more uh, inputs 
You can kind of barely see it here. Um, this is a, a like a, a single row of them, but uh, they make these like double rows. So I have one of those down here. So at the moment, actually, I have every outlet accounted for except for one, which means if I add one more device, uh, then I can plug that in. But anything more than that, then I'm going to have to add another power strip. But I'm kind of out of space anyway, so we're pretty good. Um, I think I'd like to add a Sega Saturn if I could fit it in there. Um, maybe the Nintendo 64. I and mean, that's it. That's the only consoles that I haven't accounted for. But uh, anything that I can use that can run off of... Uh, a USB wall charger, then I like these uh, Anchor, Anchor, uh, 10 port, 60 watt USB chargers. So that just takes up one space and then you can charge everything through that. Um, use the same thing uh, for some wireless controllers that I have in that setup too. So, um, and then you can kind of see we're stuck with this really big uh, power block down here in the space. Um, so, the thing that I don't know if you can appreciate, but all that complexity, right? And all I've got coming in and out of here is power, okay? Um, a Wii sensor, of course, but if you don't use that, you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then Ethernet, which actually you might not need if you're just using retro consoles. Um, and then one HDMI cable. So you may, you may have a setup where you just got power and one HDMI cable through all that complexity goes in and out. So then um, this just goes to my network. Uh, HDMI goes to my receiver, um, of which uh, that I use a Denon uh, receiver that has two um, video outs. And you use uh, video two for everything that's gaming. So then that video two plugs into um, a separate HDMI input on my TV that I can set some specific settings for gaming um, versus uh, my other cha my other input that I use for movies and stuff, where you turn on all the effects and all that kind of crap. And then, uh, um, all right, so let's try this on now. And let's start turning these things on. Um, overall, I can pretty much control everything with one remote. Um, just takes time to sit there, program everything in, and uh, even something that uh, um, wouldn't be in there um, devices and stuff like this is a remote for a heater uh, you can program this so that uh, remote uh, that came with it I'll just sit there spend some time and just uh, program uh, each of the uh, buttons into here um, so then I could control that device from from here um, and then I got a collection of uh, remotes here we're just gonna get things going and I might be a thing or two since I have the new switch. Hopefully it all works the way I expect it to. Um, okay, so there I'm just uh, turning on the receiver uh, to the input that HDMI from there comes to. And uh, uh, I think it's just defaulting that it can detect that the OSSC is on and since nothing else is on, um, that's why you get their loading screen. But uh, I'm gonna start out with Xbox Series X. Um, because that can output uh, 4K and all, and uh, we're going to see if that's working. Which, I mean, I can tell you it is, because otherwise that's how the settings I have set up and it wouldn't have displayed anything. So, um, uh, where? Device details. So, if that switch didn't support this, it wouldn't show that my TV displayed all this. Because really, that it's it's really detecting the the thing that's most proximate to the device, like what it supports. So, you know, if it was plugged straight into the TV, then yeah, it's saying what the TV tells or says you can do or supports. But if there's any devices in the middle, so the receiver and then in this case the switch, um, that could be limiting. And I know that for a fact. I wasn't able to do 4K um, on uh, that previous uh, Monoprice uh, device. Um, what I haven't quite figured out, and I had the same problem with uh, um, uh, where, where's it at? Uh, audio. Um, same problem with the other uh, switch. I, so I don't know if it's a matter of the switch 
that it's going to, the mono price one or this uh, uh, T-Smart one, or if it has to do with my receiver, which I find a little odd, but for some reason, I can't bitstream Dolby Atmos. Um, it says uh, receiver doesn't support, which I don't know. It might be, I'll have to test this out, like plug it straight in. Well, actually, no, I can say that I was having the same problem when I had it plugged straight into the receiver. So, um, I don't know. That's just something for me to figure out. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so it, it, it is advertised, supports 4K, uh, 40, 444. So let's turn this off and just test some other devices. So I want to go to a PlayStation Next because it's just another one we can test the uh, 4K on. And I uh, don't know if you hear the little beeping and stuff. I think that's just the PlayStation, but I did notice that the Switch made a beep at some point. Um, but anyways, uh, um, it automatically switch to the appropriate channel. You probably can't see from here, but there's a number down there in that LED. So this is channel six, that uh, Xbox was channel eight, or input eight rather, and it just automatically switched in between the two. So, uh, oh, I know it's something we can test. Um, I think this is an HDR. Um, Okay, so just the, so it, it see on the TV, uh, the little thing, HDR logo. So um, HDR is going through, um, yeah, that's all I really wanted to test. So uh, we're not to sit and play it. Um, HDR, and uh, also I'll just tell you this is in 4K because otherwise it wouldn't have displayed anything. It would have been a blank screen and I had to reset the device, I think. Um, but uh, devices, no. Um, When I'm making a video, I'm like super dumb, sorry. So, um, okay, there, so let's just, I mean, set it to automatic or not, I think the rest is best, just leave it to automatic, but uh, um, video output information, it's outputting at 4K, uh, RGB, uh, test something else. So, yeah, so down there, 16 point, 16.9, 2160p, which is uh, 4K. And on the receiver, uh, so uh, this doesn't really give you the greatest information. Kind of more like audio stuff. So I'll probably have to do that. I'll check these in, um, info settings more when I'm do, using the Xbox. Try to figure out why it's not doing the Atmos. All right, so let's turn this off. And I find with the PlayStation, it's a little trickier, but going into the standby mode, it can take a minute to really kind of quit outputting a signal. So I'm gonna wait just a moment so that HDMI switcher doesn't get confused. And let's go to Nintendo Switch. So that's going to be 1080p output. Okay. So really nothing else to show because there's nothing really fancy in terms of output settings and stuff, but uh, just kind of showing that it's automatically switching. So that's input 13, I think it is, I can see. So let's turn this off. Sync mode now. Now let's get a little fancier. So, um, let's just see, I need to tell it, it's on my remote, um, cause it has, I don't know if it just does this automatically, um, but I just have it set up so I can, uh, turn it on to, I just can't call it YPBB, YPBPR. So, you know, setting the input to a uh, component. So it should work the way I want it to. And we're gonna turn on a Wii. Hear it turning on, and it looks like it's working. So, yeah, so we got we running through component through that uh, G comp or GS comp, I forget what it's called, I'm sorry. Um, then to the OSSC, right? And 
Let's just look at a couple settings here. So 480p. Yeah. And then I think sounds just, uh, it says surround. I think you have to have certain games that otherwise my receiver is just saying stereo, it's playing in stereo. So. Uh, let's look at what the TV is getting. It's saying 480p, right? And I do not have the SSC super figured out yet, but uh, I believe that's saying the input is 480p. I think that's what that means, that number at the right-hand corner. I get confused by these other numbers. I know a little more about it, know what's doing what, but, uh, um, okay. So let's uh, try to get that to close. All right, so let's go to something else. Um, we're gonna go to that Mega SG. Let's turn off the switch. Or we. So I have to go turn this on. So I didn't even change anything on the OSSC because the HDMI switch, the switcher should detect that now the signal is coming from the Mega SD. And I believe this na natively outputs to 1080p, so um, nothing really special, which is great. That's why I'm actually not even to mess with right now with uh, plugging in my NES and Super NES because, yeah, 1080p. Because if those go in stock, I'm just gonna go buy one of those and <laughs> that's really what I want. All right, so let's turn that off. Now, this is gonna be a little bit fancier, I think. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna try a few more games out here. We're gonna go to the GameCube. So, working. And I think you should just go straight to the game. Yeah. Deep into that darkness so let's check what we're doing. Oh, I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting. So it's going 480p. I don't know if it's because the game naturally does it or I was hitting B when I loaded it, which I think loads it into 480p if it supports it. sound dumb because there's a lot of this I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> I, I do something where I like I figure out like 20% of it and then just go like do it and have to figure out the rest later but um, I think it's taking a 480i input and then it's um, doing the Bob the inter de interlacing to 480p I think is how I had the, uh, the setup. So um, uh, it's under output options. 480i to, yeah. So I think that it's just because I have it set up that way. So, GameCube's working. Let's turn that off, try another game. So let's do uh, Xbox next. Settings. Yeah, so everything's turned on. So um, this, um, I don't know if I have any games that do different resolutions. Um, I know there's a few that does like you know, uh, 1080i, I think, and then uh, a bunch that do 720p. Um, I never really cared and looked into it and stuff. So um, I'll look at all that and test them out. Let's see. So this is a 480p so far. Yeah, so I think so it'd be naturally going in 480p, and so they just, um, I think it just does a line doubling. Let's see how that is set up. No, 480p is passed through. 
because I kind of figure I could experiment with this, but I kind of figure my TV may be upscaling that just fine. Um, so that'd be something to look in later to maximize things. So <laughs> there's some stuff from 2009 and then I pulled this out again in 2017. So that's one of the coolest things about this. I, I just love going back and things I saved. I'm like, oh, wow, uh, 2007, I was doing this. All right, so let's try a different game here. So I'm thinking that change this input to the RGB SCART. Should just do that on its own and let's try PlayStation 1 game. So note to self to edit some of this out, but I'll leave this part in. So reminder, <laughs> those SCART cables seem to like get disconnected pretty easily. So with messing around with setting everything up, um, Kevin's first rule of tech is that things never work the first time, but um, it just the cable been a little disconnected so when you get all that set up make sure you go back in there and plug everything all in back nice and neat so uh this is 240p in and this uh i think i have this up, up to line doubling yeah and uh i did a little experimentation with this and i felt like that just worked out best for me was that uh, 2x but uh, um this isn't a lesson on how to use the OSSC. I'm not an expert, but uh, there, PlayStation working. Let's try PlayStation 2. This one, my favorite cover of any game ever. Just love that. Uh, Maybe just load the game up, but I was going to show you settings wise. Um, so obviously, if you're watching this, you probably know the um, PlayStation, you, um, you can set the output to YPBPR or um, uh, RGB. And I think we're going, we're running. Right. Okay. So, this is 480i, so it's gonna be Bob D interlacing that to 480p. And see what the TV sees. Yeah, 480p. So, I like this game. But uh, we're not here to watch all day. Let's try one more. So let's try Dreamcast through that DVI. Let's see what inputs we got and outputs. Six forty by four eighty. Four eighty. So uh, the rest of these, I are going to assume works just fine because it just straight up through HDMI 1080, uh, 1080p. Um, and my point with all this is to show that that switch uh, for, I think is a reasonable price. It, so far as looking like it's a one-stop shop if you've got a whole bunch of things you're trying to connect. And uh, um, if you only got a, you know, a couple things, just plug them straight into your TV or into a receiver. But um, so far, so good. So just wanted to say a couple last words, um, and then uh, I'm gonna play some video games. I'm just <laughs> spending all day setting this up. Um, first, uh, if you are stumbling on this video, and if you haven't uh, checked out uh, my life in gaming, pretty much everything I know um, I've learned uh, from their videos and uh, retro RGB. Um, and then I'll, I'll put some links down below uh, to those sites, and then um, there may be just a couple key things that. Uh, um, uh, to search, uh, send you to, to, to purchase, uh, no fill it links. Cause I'm not that sophisticated. So have fun.